I'm Melissa Rowland with the Los Angeles Times and we have a real treat today. I'm here with Michael Thompson who's a former Showtime Laker and a current Laker radio color commentator. Michael, how are you doing? I'm doing good after that Laker win. I know. Yes. So the Lakers just pounced the Denver Nuggets 103 to 88. Now the real story of today's game was Andrew Bynum. Bynum recorded a rare triple-double with 10 points, 13 rebounds, and 10 block shots. What did you think of his play tonight? I thought that if Andrew Bynum comes with that kind of attitude every night, not so much uh, to dominate on the, deep, on the offensive end, but to guard the basket and protect the lane the way he did in game one, if he does that, and that's his motivation, that's his goal every game, the play that he did today defensively, the Lakers can definitely cruise all the way to the finals led by him because when he wants to play defense, that makes it very tough for anybody to score in the Lakers. Devin E. Banks and Steve Blake led the Lakers at halftime. Did you ever think that we'd be able to say that in a sentence? Not for a second anybody ever thought about that, that Devin E. Banks and Steve Blake would be the leading scorers for the Lakers at halftime. Not when you have Andrew Bynum, Kobe Bryant, and Paul Gasol on the floor. So, But those guys showed that they were willing to take advantage of their opportunity with Metta World Peace suspended. Devin E. Banks knows that he's going to get a lot more minutes now. It's good to see young guys like that, and even a veteran like Steve Blake, seize the moment, which they did in Game 1. Speaking of Meta World Peace's seven-game suspension, do you think the Lakers missed him at all tonight? Oh, they definitely missed him. Uh, they missed him on the floor because he's so disruptive, even though Devin E. Banks did a very good job in his place today. But they definitely are going to miss uh, Meta World Peace as long as he's out. The Lakers held the Denver Nuggets to 36% shooting, and they held the Nuggets' leading scorer, Ty Lawson, to seven points. Were the Lakers that good, or were the Denver Nuggets that bad tonight? I think it was a little bit of both. I, th I thought Ty Lawson was taken out of his game, which was the fast break game. The Lakers did a good job keeping him in half-court offense. If you let him go end-to-end -end or get in the open court with fast breaks, he's unstoppable because he's so fast. But they did a good job keeping him under control, and uh, Ramon Sessions did a good job chasing him over screens, and he didn't get a lot of open shots. So that's what they have to continue to do with this guy. But it's hard to contain him because he's just so quick. And eventually, one of these games, he's going to bust out, he's going to get loose, and he's going to have a Ty Lawson-type game, 20 points, 10 assists. Now, moving forward to Game 2, what do you think are the Lakers' keys for continued success? Basically, just uh, repeat Game 1. I mean, they don't have to change anything. They did everything. They took care of the ball, low turnover count. They only had 11 turnovers in Game 1. But defensively, the way they played on defense, if they keep that defensive attitude and effort, then nothing should change for game two. Now, Michael, let's get this on record. What's your prediction for the series? I said five games to start the series, and I think it's going to, I think it's going to be five because somewhere along the line, the Lakers are going to have a hiccup, maybe uh, not play up to their standards, especially back in Denver. It's a tough place to win. Denver's a good team, and up in that altitude, sometimes it's hard. So I think they can uh, take it in five games. There you have it, five games. Thank you very much. I'm Melissa Rowland here with Michael Thompson.